Hey guys, back again. Talk about more about Halloween 3. Shut up. The, the mouth on this guy. Anyway, last time we talked about Halloween 3, I discussed whether or not it stood on its own as a legitimately good movie. And while it certainly had its flaws, it wasn't exactly on the same level as the original Halloween, I had a fun time watching it. It was drenched in the Halloween season with the costumes, trick-or-treating. It was, it did have good atmosphere and some good suspense, and I thought it was fairly good. Now, this video, though, we want to discuss, should the franchise have stuck with that anthology series idea, making every film a separate story focus on different parts of Halloween? Well, the third one, Season of the Witch, didn't exactly impress the box office, so the studio decided to bring back Michael Myers for Halloween 4, the return of Michael Myers. So this is less so much focused talking about Halloween 3 itself, which was what we did in the last video, and more discussing how did the other Michael Myers sequel movies do. So we're not taking into account Halloween 2, and we're not taking into account the Rob Zombie movies, or the new Bloomhouse one. Sorry. So Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, focused on Jamie, the daughter of Lois Strode, who died in a car crash off screen, and is now in the Foster family. Michael Myers escapes from an institution after 10 years in a coma, to go and hunt his niece down and kill her. A lot of this movie is just basically a retread of the original film. Although there were a couple of small things to help distinguish it from some of the other sequels. The one that sticks out in my mind is the very ending of that film, or there, it seems to be that Jamie has the same evil disease as Michael as she kills her foster mom. That was out of nowhere. And they kind of completely ignore that thing, sort of, in Halloween 5, the revenge of Michael Myers. The death of Jamie's foster mom still exists, but she isn't really so much the same evil disease carrier so much as somehow having a psychic connection to her uncle. Now this film, from what I've heard, opened theatrically in the US, but in most places in other countries was straight to DVD. Not that great when you have that going on with their, your movie's release. Although I will say that Michael Myers is a little bit more ruthless in the fifth one compared to the fourth film, which is certainly entertaining in itself, and we had more Dr. Loomis, both being legitimately badass and just being a little bit crazy. Five films will do that to you. But then we got Halloween 6. This movie was botched so much that the producers cut a version of the film that never saw theaters is significantly more impressive than what we got in the theatrical version. Yeah, he, he got it down. The theatrical version of Halloween 6 was so badly edited, focused, and paced that I can't even call it a movie. At least the producers cut had a clearly structured beginning, middle, and end. And due to the poor reception of Halloween 6, and also partly because Donald Pleasance, the actor who played Dr. Loomis, died before the movie was actually released, they decided to completely drop the plot thread of Halloween 6 in favor of a reboot, H2O. Wiping out the events of 4, 5, and 6. So yeah, I guess those movies aren't really worth keeping in canon. H2O is really just a generic 90s slasher film. 
The only thing to make this distinguishly Halloween is the last 15, 20 minutes of the film of Michael and Laurie fighting off. And then after that, we got Halloween Resurrection that killed Laurie in the opening scene. What's he going to do now? Apparently kill a bunch of teenagers in a reality show that's being filmed at his house and going up against Busta Rhymes. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's one scene in Halloween Resurrection that almost makes it okay. Where during like the climatic fight where everything is on fire, Buster Rhymes just comes breaking through a door and just goes, Trick or treat, motherfucker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. And after that film, they went with the Rob Zombie remake. But again, we're not really discussing that. So anyway, The Return, The Revenge, and The Curse of Michael Myers, as well as H2O and Resurrection. Sprinkled throughout those movies, there are a couple of pieces and scenes that were actually kind of good. But there's few of them, and they're really spread out. And I, would not, I wouldn't really call any of those five films legitimately good films. I mean, even the producer's cut of Halloween 6, which is superior to the theatrical version, still had its flaws, it was just something that I can actually call a movie. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is, maybe it's, it would have been for the best if we made an anthology series. I mean, don't get me wrong, Michael Myers has gone on to become iconic. And I guess we, he wouldn't have become iconic if we didn't have these sequels. Look, I can't speak to what might have happened if the Halloween franchise stuck with the anthology route. We probably would have gotten some thinkers too. We could have also probably gotten some iconic stories. But honestly, the Halloween franchise as it is right now, the only one that's legitimately unanimously good is the original. How the original Halloween 2 and Halloween 3 Season of the Witch are considered the better sequels of the franchise. As for all the others, they were either just fine or bad. I probably, personally, if I was in charge, I would have just taken the gamble and stuck with the anthology route. But I can still find some enjoyment in the Michael Myers sequels. Especially in the Blumhouse one. I really like that one. I'll admit that. But that's basically what I have to say. Leave your comment down below. Like, subscribe, share. See you guys next time. And happy Halloween. It's almost upon us. In like a week. I'm just excited, okay? <laughs>